When it comes to adapting large pieces of literature for performance, understanding the concept of cutting and organizing is essential. In this short lecture we will cover these two main subjects to better understand how to choose and adapt your chosen pieces for your literary performances. We will begin with cutting. Cutting refers to the process of condensing a lengthy text, such as a novel or play, into a shorter and more manageable form. Cutting a piece of literature involves identifying the key elements of the story, such as the beginning, middle, and end, and deciding which parts are crucial to the overall plot and themes. It's important to consider some major factors when cutting your literature pieces. First, you should consider the general expectations of your audience. Consider how they will react to your piece and performance. Next, consider the specific message or themes that you want to convey in your performance. Third, think on the interests of the audience and take it into account. Ask yourself what aspects of the story are likely to engage them the most. By understanding the audience's preferences and tastes, you can ensure that the adapted version remains captivating and relatable. Fourth, when cutting a piece of literature, think which characters will be included in the performance and how many of them will be represented. It's crucial to select characters that are integral to the story and contribute significantly to its development, and do not try to fit too many characters in your performance. Lastly, providing background information is also essential to help the audience understand the context of the story. This can be done through expositional elements that set the stage for the events to come, and is often done in the introduction portion which we will cover in a later lecture. Another part of cutting is to use dramatic structuring for the development of your plots. Consider the five parts of dramatic structure, exposition, conflict and rising action, climax, falling action, and denouement or catastrophe. Exposition refers to the introduction of your characters, setting, and context in order to give the basic background needed for understanding your performance. The exposition should end with what is called the inciting moment, which begins your story. Conflict and rising refers to the revelation of a problem due to conflicts and secondary conflicts. When your main conflict is revealed, the secondary conflicts add complications to the main conflict, but are not as prevalent. Next is the climax, which refers to the turning point in your story where the height of your conflict is unleashed and there is a change for the better or worse for the main character. After the climax comes the falling action where the events begin to settle, and the resolution of the conflict begins to unfold. And last there is the denouement or catastrophe, here the story settles the resolution or concludes in an ending. The difference between a denouement and catastrophe is what we would consider a happy and tragic ending. In a denouement the conclusion has a positive ending, such as a hero or protagonist ending better than they started. In a catastrophe the ending is worse off for the main character than the beginning. It's up to the adapter to determine how the story will unfold and whether it will be presented in a linear or non-linear fashion. Linear fashion will have a story presented in chronological order as it moves forward. Non-linear fashion will have a story in reverse or perhaps making use of flashbacks. Cutting a large piece of literature for performance requires careful consideration of the audience's expectations, the central themes of the story, and the key elements needed to convey the narrative effectively. By understanding these factors and utilizing the five parts of dramatic structure, an engaging and impactful adaptation can be created. Another method when cutting literature is one presented by Ramirez, the author of your text. She uses what is named the cha-cha-cha method, which can help make the process easier and more effective. The cha-cha-cha method involves several steps that help you trim your piece down to its most essential parts. The first step is to chunk it. This means choosing specific portions of your piece, such as plot synopsis, and labeling each one in one or two words. This helps you identify the different sections of your work and understand what each one contributes to the overall story. Next, you chuck it. This step involves removing sections of your piece that you don't like or that don't add value to the story. This helps you streamline your work and focus on what is most important. After that, you choose it. This step is about selecting the most vital moments of your piece. You want to choose portions that will set the tone and mood of the story, introduce the characters, build intensity and include major events, and focus on the message you want to convey. You also want to make sure your ending has a big impact, so choose a memorable line to close your piece. Once you have selected the most important parts, you chum it. This step involves enhancing the rising action and conflict of your piece, making sure everything leads smoothly to the climax. Then, you chip it. 
This step is all about trimming and cutting your lines and words to balance each section. You want to remove anything unnecessary and make sure each part flows smoothly into the next. Next, you, check it. This step involves practicing your performance and checking the timing. This will help you ensure that your piece fits within the desired time frame. Finally, you, cheat it. This step is about adding segments to connect the different parts of your piece. This helps create a coherent and seamless narrative. By following these steps, the cha-cha-cha method can help you cut your literature effectively and create a more engaging and impactful story. Now that we have a basic understanding of cutting, let us move on to organizing. When it comes to organizing literature pieces, there are several approaches that can be taken. Each of these methods can help readers better understand the main ideas and concepts within a piece of literature. One way to organize a piece of literature is by its theme. A theme is a recurring idea or concept that is woven throughout the story. By organizing a literature piece by theme, readers can identify the ideas and messages that the author is trying to convey. For example, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton has prevailing themes about social class conflicts and the bridging of social classes. The Gatsby by Fitzgerald has themes about class, wealth, society, and the loss of idealism and failure of the American dream. Another approach is to organize a literature piece by its concepts. While similar to themes, concepts are more abstract and encompass a broader topic. They serve as the foundation upon which the story is built and help to unfold the narrative. Observed by C.S. Lewis revolves around the concept of guilt and depression. Organizing by message involves understanding the author's viewpoint or position in response to the theme or concept. Messages are specific and reflect the author's moral or philosophical perspective. For example, the message of the book of Revelation by the Apostle John is that all men will be judged by God, whether good or evil. Organizing by lessons is similar to organizing by message, but with a more focused aim of what the author wants the story to teach. Lessons can be identified as specific sections within a literature piece and can encompass multiple ideas or teachings. For example, in Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Dufo there are many lessons. Obey and honor your parents. Make do with what little you have. Be grateful for what God provides. Lastly, organizing a literature piece by thesis involves identifying the main argument or assertion the author is making. A thesis statement presents the main points and conclusions that the author has reached. By utilizing these different organizational methods, readers can gain a deeper understanding of a literature piece's main ideas, concepts, messages, lessons, and overall argument. Organizing literature allows readers to engage with the text on a more analytical level, leading to a greater appreciation and comprehension of the author's work. And with that we will conclude our presentation. Keep in mind that there is no incorrect choice when it comes to your organization style, it just has to be a piece which will work with your cutting method. Although it may seem a bit daunting, once you have practiced this a few times you should have very little issues not only choosing, but also cutting your literature pieces down to a good performance.